If you are dealing with dry locks and you have no idea why, then this video is just for you because I'm going to tell you some of the reasons why your locks are dry. Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome back to The Real ZB. My name is Zinche and on this channel, I talk about my personal lock journey as well as give you tips and tricks on how to maintain your locks from the comfort of your own home. So I've heard about this misconception that people think locks are supposed to be dry, but moisture is of the, uh, the most absolute importance. And I've also found along my lock journey that sometimes my hair does get uh, quite dry and quite crunchy at times. This is a common thing that people are dealing with, like I'll get DMs of people asking me why their locks are dry or what they can do to add moisture. It's a very, very, very common thing, but the cause of the dryness can be a variety of different reasons so what I'm trying to do with this video is to help you find the cause of the dryness in your locks so that you can find you can better find a sun so no particular order I'm just gonna jump right into it so your hair sometimes is dry because it's your hair's way of communicating with you it's your hair's way of telling you that maybe the product that you are using your hair does not appreciate or does not agree with um, so when you find that you are using a lot of products on your hair maybe try and reduce the amount of products that you are using on your hair um, switch some of them out sometimes it's a way of your hair telling you that it's time to switch up the products that you're using um, sometimes you'll find that at the beginning of using certain products it's very great and adds a lot of moisture but then over time your hair gets used to it so you should also be on the lookout for those things maybe you've been using one particular product for too long and your hair is just kind of immune to the benefits of that that product so you should look at switching it up another reason is maybe you are lacking moisture because you don't have a set moisturizing routine so it's very important because sometimes you can forget <laughs> to do your maybe night routine your morning routine your weekly routine whatever routine that you've decided to implement it maybe you're forgetting or maybe you are not doing it as often um, as you should so your hair as a result um, gets drier because you're not adding moisture adding products that will moisturize it um, also one thing that I've implemented is that I've set aside one day for my wash day so in order for me to remember that okay on Sunday I wash my hair um, so set a certain day where you are going to be doing your deep conditioning and your wash day and all of that stuff if you are the kind of person who forgets and after like six weeks you realize I haven't washed my hair in six weeks so one thing that I can recommend is to have a set day or even a set time um, as if you were drinking pills maybe at nine o'clock at night you decide that's gonna be my night routine maybe move the stuff that you use on your hair in the morning to be next to your skincare so that when you're doing your skincare and you brush your teeth then immediately you doing also your morning lock moisture so those are the things that i would recommend you doing if maybe the dryness is due to you not having a lock moisture routine i have a video that i did and i will link it in the cards about how to add moisture to your hair and how to retain moisture onto your hair so if you're not quite sure how to do it then go ahead and watch that video in this video right here i mentioned the characteristics that you should be looking for in a shampoo that is going to be suitable for your locks so the shampoo that you are using if it contains sulfates such as sodium laurel sulfate it will tend to strip your hair's natural oils out of your hair, thus ending up in a dry situation. So always look out for sulfates in your shampoo. 
so if you're someone who does already struggle with dry hair then try to stay away from shampoos that contain sulfates i actually started recently trying out a new shampoo this one yeah right here i was trying out the shampoo um from the clicks every true range because they they have this range for natural hair um so i was like oh okay it contains jojoba and argan oil i'm gonna try it but then when i looked at the ingredients at the back it contains lauryl sulfate and a number of other sort of chemical and chemicals do tend to strip uh, moisture out of your locks so I have found that while I've used the shampoo I've used the shampoo twice um, for two for two wash days and I've found that my hair is a lot drier okay like I'm not even kidding like I wash my hair with the shampoo and within an hour or two which is very rare for me within an hour or two my hair is completely like dry and I air dry my hair I don't blow dry my hair on wash day um, I find that immediately like an hour or two hours my hair is completely dry so you need to just be careful if you are using shampoos that have sulfates in them and that have chemicals in them just be pre-warned that your hair will tend to get drier so you need to work a little bit harder at adding moisture so what i had to do is i have had to like spritz my hair now and then because it literally just feels when i touch my hair it just feels really crunchy and really really dry because of this i mean it's not all bad as a shampoo because it does clarify it's got very good clarifying qualities that are able to take build up and gunk and all of the stuff that's building up in your hair out however i would not recommend using a shampoo like this um, on a weekly basis or every time that you have wash day maybe once in a blue moon when you just want to make sure that you are deep clarifying your hair but not on a weekly basis with a shampoo that contains all <laughs> all of the chemicals in the world yeah just keep that in mind when you're picking a shampoo um, that sh if you're going to use a shampoo that has chemicals and sulfates in it your hair will be dry so another reason is if you have colored your hair and more especially if you have bleached your hair um because the the what the dyes and the bleaches tend to do is they also tend to strip a lot of your hair's moisture out to such a point where your hair could literally break okay so before you actually go out and dye or bleach your hair what i recommend is to do a deep conditioning some kind of deep conditioning treatment maybe a hot oil treatment and also after you have dyed or bleached your hair make sure that you are doing the hot oil treatment or a deep conditioning treatment on a regular basis um, so that you put back all the nutrients that the dyes have um, have stripped out of your hair also now they're coming out with all these conditioning dyes so maybe look at using one of those instead of using like your old-fashioned ammonium peroxide ammonium peroxide ammonium peroxide dyes um, maybe look at using some of the conditioning dyes that they're having out of the market now because those tend to be a lot less harsh on your hair but also make sure that you you don't relax and say that it's a conditioning dye i'm safe um, rather do your treatments before and after you die and make sure that you are even more diligent with your moisture routine after you've dyed your hair and even before preparing for the dye and for the bleach make sure that you are a lot more um diligent and a lot more conscientious with your um lock moisture routine because it's going to be of the utmost importance and a com another common one is climate now i don't want to prescribe for you and say your hair will be dry in winter or your hair will be dry in summer because the truth is we all live different lives and our hair reacts differently to different 
kinds of settings so what I want to speak about on this point is the fact that you need to be really just noticing your hair and just really just keeping an eye on it um, so that you know which climates your hair tends to be dry in for example myself my hair tends to be dry in summer because I'm out at the beach I'm swimming at the beach so the salt water or the ocean water tends to you know have a very drying impact on my hair the Sun I'm exposed to the Sun quite a bit because I'm at the beach I'm out and about I'm doing all these things besides from the summer that we came from but you know all the summer activities being exposed to the Sun swimming in the pool um, the chlorine also has an effect um, on the moisture of your hair even a salt water pool will have an effect on the moisture of your hair um, swimming at the beach like all of this stuff that happens in summer I do find that my person my hair personally tends to get drier in summer in winter not so much because I do like to cover my hair in winter um, I like to wear beanies I like to wear head wraps so it's not as much exposed to the elements as it is in summer so other people will tend to find that their hair gets drier in winter um, in winter than it is in summer so it's it's a it's an it's a case by case basis so you need to make sure that you are really paying attention to your hair to see which season it gets drier in also your summer moisture routine and your winter moisture routine cannot look the same because your hair reacts differently in both climates so you need to develop a summer routine in order to address your summer uh, your your summer hair needs and you need to make sure that your winter routine is different so that it addresses the needs of your hair in winter another thing that i have found to be instrumental in my lock moisture is satin um i said sometime last year i was having like a sort of a crisis trying to find the best satin scarf or satin scarf that was long enough for my hair and which one to choose because there were so many to choose from right and i didn't necessarily want to spend 300 rand on a satin scarf or a satin pillowcase that you know yeah, just because people said so what I what I had decided to do then is to try out the satin thing so I have this robe it's just like a normal satin robe so I decided I was going to try it out as a head wrap and then try it out as a pillowcase and let me tell you something satin is the truth satin they didn't lie about satin pillowcases and um satin scarves um i actually have two of these robes so i found that when i used it on my hair like the moisture that i put in my during my night routine i would wake up and the moisture is still there when i was using it like as a head wrap when I was using it as a pillowcase, not so much, but I wouldn't wake up with my hair being completely dry. So it would retain some moisture. So yeah, this influenced me to get a satin uh, bonnet and a satin duke. So if, so if you don't have like a satin pillowcase or a satin duke and you're finding that your hair is dry and your hair isn't retaining moisture, I would suggest that you try it out. Try the ones from Clicks first to see if you're going to if it's going to have the same effect that my hair has had. It's only like 80 to 100 rand. So try those out or if you already have like a satin pajama or a satin uh, gown robe like I do, then try that out before you go out and buy like your expensive satin or silk scarves because I'm telling you <laughs> I am convinced now that satin is the truth. So all in all, it's very important to study and learn your hair. So if you want to see some more of my lock maintenance videos, 
please click on this playlist right here don't forget to subscribe if you have not already and i will see you in the next video thank you so much for watching guys bye